Hi, welcome back to the show. Markets have come off a tad bit from the highs of trade, but still 56.10 is where the Nifty is holding at this point in time. Uh, the Finance Minister, more comments coming in from there where he says that the oil PSUs will raise higher ECBs as well. This was in the works for a while. Uh, talks have been on as well that uh, a lot of these oil PSUs like HPCL, BPCL, etc. will be asked to raise higher ECBs. So that's the latest that's coming in from there. But let's get another guest in. Amrish Balika joins in on, uh, on the show as well. Hi, Amrish. Thanks for being with us. I, I wanted your afternoon. view, good afternoon, I wanted your view on SBI particularly because you know it's not just the asset quality pressures but now it seems like after all these uh, steps that the uh, that the RBI is taking, it is a given that we'll have to deal with slower growth and eventually like someone was pointing out, it could be a super NPL cycle that many of these banks will have to deal with. Uh, how do you approach a name like SBI under, under this uh, circumstance? Absolutely. I think that's what I've been saying for the last uh, two to three months that with the way the economy is slowing down, uh, clearly your NPS will shoot up and uh, someone like SBI and the other PSU banks, I think they will take the maximum brunt of these NPS shooting up. So I think we would be in a different sort of a cycle uh, where uh, there could be willful defaults, especially from these corporates. So I think, uh, I mean, going ahead, at least the next couple of quarters still looks grim. Unless, of course, I mean, uh, someone uh, waves the magic uh, wand and uh, you have the economy pulling up uh, from uh, the, uh, like the lower levels. So in case that happens, which I think is quite, quite doubtful, but in case that happens, yes, I suppose, uh, I mean, there is an hope. Otherwise, I think most of these banks will still seek lower levels. Amrish, hi, afternoon. It's been a surprise quarter from a couple of these pharma um, names, Sun Pharma and Sipla in particular. What would your call be on both of these now? Uh, in fact, uh, we have liked the numbers of Sun Pharma, Lupin, Cipla, even Randaxi, which was a surprise. So I think all of these are more or less hold or buys. In fact, we have a buy on Lupin, Sun Pharma, we had a target of 540, that's been achieved. So in fact, we are seeing, I mean, at this point of time, it's a hold. Uh, Randaxi anyway was a surprise and uh, we, we saw extremely good movement. But the only one uh, where we, are, we were disappointed to a certain extent is Dr. Reddy, which is clearly shown in the sort of a correction uh, post that. So, in fact, I mean, these uh, four stocks which I just mentioned are older buys. Okay, just hold on, uh, Ambrish. We'll get a quick word in from an economist who uh, who has been watching all these uh, flashes on the screen where the finance ministry is trying its best to curb the fall in the rupee. And we understand that there will be an issuance of quasi-sovereign bonds as was talked about a whole lot. Aditi Nair of uh, Ikra joins in now. Aditi, what have you made of the comments that the finance minister has made and how much this could really help in terms of both the current account deficit as well as the rupee? See, broadly, uh, you know, in terms of the positive thousand bonds uh, that have been mentioned, I believe the uh, finance minister has indicated that uh, some PSUs would be allowed to raise uh, so, uh, quasi sovereign bonds, uh, which would uh, help to pull in, uh, you know, further uh, inflows of uh, uh, foreign uh, currency denominated uh, debt. Now, firstly, of course, you know, uh, such issues are ultimately uh, going to further add to the stock of the debt and that is already one of the concerns uh, that uh, we have as far as the external sector vulnerability is concerned. Of course, to the extent that, uh, you know, uh, the proposed debt is going to be long term in nature, at least we won't have, a, a, you know, a near term refinancing issue uh, that would be there. Uh, however, uh, it still remains to be seen, you know, which entities are really going to be raising such funds and what are they going to be doing with those funds? Is it capital expenditure that they already have plans for that is going to be funded uh, through such issuances? Because if so, then that is at least something that, uh, you know, would also add to the overall uh, uh, investment uh, activity uh, in the economy and so that may uh, be positive. However, obviously more uh, details need to be seen uh, as to who is going to be raising these bonds and what are they actually going to be doing with that money. Mm. As far as uh, the gold and, uh, you know, silver and oil imports are concerned, I think, you know, uh, in terms of the trade data that we've seen today, one of the positives, uh, you know, to me is that uh, the volume of crude oil imports appears to have fallen in uh, July 2013 as compared to last year. And uh, possibly uh, one of the two major reasons for that is, of course, we've had a better monsoon this year as compared to last year. So the demand uh, for diesel to run pump sets, you know, either by domestic consumers or by the agricultural sector is possibly a lot lower this year than what it was uh, last year. So that is uh, overall uh, one uh, positive factor. 
secondly uh, you know we've now had several months of uh, increases in diesel prices and that again is something that is uh, uh, possibly helping to uh, contain the uh, growth of uh, you know volumes as far as uh, uh, petroleum products is concerned so uh, you know already some measures uh, seem to be having uh, an impact and of course the uh, beneficial impact of a better monsoon right. coming in okay aditi we'll have to leave it at that thanks so much for giving us your view we have uh, s narayan the former finance secretary as well who joins in uh, Mr. Narayan, thanks so much for being with us on the phone line. We are hearing some comments on what the finance ministry plans to do in terms of tackling the current account deficit as well as the rupee. But uh, uh, the, the rupee sadly has not reacted to any of these measures that have been taken so far and is still gravitating closer to those all-time lows. Uh, how do you think, sir, the, the situation will pan out from now on? I, I think um, I, I think uh, what the finance minister is doing, uh, to my mind, is a bit dangerous. Actually, what is he doing? He is he is increasing the debt. He is increasing mm. the debt by allowing the uh, states uh, to to or state corporations to borrow overseas. Mm. So in a way, there is no no solution of how this debt is going to be repaid. The second, you know, he is doing a very uh, peculiar thing, which 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 uh, in a way I don't understand. That he is trying to curb the current account uh, deficit by reducing supply. He is talking about restrictions in imports, restrictions in gold and silver, etc. And I have not seen a situation where demand gets reduced because you reduce supply. Actually, just just the demand goes underground, and just uh, you are promoting uh, the the same kind of uh, uh, import arbitrage that used to happen before 1991. So I think I think this is a bit of a desperate measure. I would have been very very happy if he had announced measures for improving exports. Let's say huge export incentives or encouraging export oriented inter industries to bring in technology or capital. If it had been much more focused and uh, this reduction of petrol, well, what is going to happen? You set up a huge number of. Automobile industries in, the, in this country. Mm. So, uh, okay, by reducing, by by trying to curb, curb uh, crude oil import, what's going to happen to the fuel sector? Mr. Are Narayan, are people going to be able to buy for cars or not? I I think this is a bit of a knee-jerk reaction, uh, which I am not right. confident will play out in the long run. Okay, uh, Mr. Narayan, will these in any way uh, help uh, pull in further inflows? Because it seems like that's the main objective that the finance minister has to pull in further inflows. Will any of these measures help at all? Certainly, if you raise bonds externally and offer offer interest rates or offer bond yields, which are much higher than what is available elsewhere, and so long as there is an implicit sovereign guarantee behind this behind this debt. Certainly, money will flow in. That is, that is absolutely that will happen. Hmm. But if you go back to the the surge in India bonds, which happened uh, when we were in a crisis, uh, and if you look at the kind of interest that we paid out on those bonds, it was three times or four times what the world was paying for hmm. its own bonds. So, hmm. in a way, it's a very very high cost uh, kind of uh, 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 protection against the foreign exchange uh, risk. Okay, Mr. Narayan, do you think uh, the current account deficit would then be curtailed at 3.7 percent, or is this just a stopgap measure? Definitely, if debt comes in, is it? There is no, there is no color to the dollar. So, in the sense that, definitely, whether it comes in as debt or as as uh, export surplus, it will reduce the current account deficit. But just remember, just remember that your reserves are getting so much shorter than the total amount of debt that you have. You are actually walking towards the edge of a precipice. Okay. okay, Mr. Narayan, thank you very much for joining in. So that's the former finance secretary saying that maybe these measures might be a little more um, difficult in terms of curtailing the downward trajectory for the rupee and currently breached 61 on an intraday basis. For the markets also come off quite a bit. So we're just about holding at around 5600, up around six tenths of a percent. Uh, Amrish, what have you made in terms of what we've seen in terms of trade today, and do you think that the INR is the dominating uh, negative uh, overhang for the markets? Absolutely. I mean, unless the government really has a handle on the rupee, and uh, I mean, if it continues uh, depreciating like this, despite the sort of uh, positive uh, sort of uh, noises coming from Delhi, 
Uh, I think the markets will uh, continue to be under pressure. I mean, what we saw today was only some sort of a bounce back, which was continuation of what we saw on Thursday. And because of which I had said uh, possibly the upset for the market is limited to about 56, 50, 56, 80. I think going beyond that would be very difficult. But then uh, we have already started uh, seeing that the markets, uh, I mean, correcting from uh, uh, like those higher levels. So I really, I really don't see this momentum continuing for too long. Okay, four and a half more minutes to go. The big losers today are SBI, Reliance Industries is actually under quite a bit of pressure and a couple of these names like TCS um, etc are also down quite a bit. So down 2% for TCS and from the pharmaceutical space it's Dr. Reddy's that's down about 2 or percent or so. What would your closing comment be Sudarshan on the markets today? I mean we'll still go home with gains although we have come off from the highs uh, perhaps because of the way banks have moved. Uh, uh, would, you get, would you have any confidence getting into trade tomorrow to continue your longs or would you just wait and watch? No, I did not have confidence to continue my longs. So at 2.30 I said, we'll get out and then wait for tomorrow. I hope people listen. The Nifty was up 75 points then. We'll take these one day at a time. This is a correction in an ongoing downtrend. Corrections are treacherous to trade, Sonia. Today we had a good day. That's it. Hmm. Uh, Mr. Tulsian, Eminem comes out with numbers tomorrow. Would you uh, have any expectations on the same? See, not taken the call, but I don't think that the disappointment will be there beyond the expectation by the market. And always, you know, Mahindra and Mahindra have been, you know, performing well after the numbers. And as such, again, the same theory that the share has been ruling at its lower end. So, you know, one can be cautious ahead of the numbers, but I am I'm positive on the stock thereafter. Uh, Amrish, how would you approach uh, some of these banks now? I mean, even uh, leaving SBI aside, uh, there, there are a whole host of banks that have seen negative numbers and gotten corrected so far. Is there anything that you would buy or would you just stay away completely from this space? I think I will mostly stay away but then uh, still uh, possibly hold on to something like an Axis or a HDFC bank and uh, I mean among the smaller ones uh, look at DCB which again has been churning out decently good results quarter on quarter so I think that could be a dark horse. Mm. Okay, just about holding with a percent and a half in terms of gains for the mid cap index. So it's definitely better in terms of a performance for the frontliners. Uh, Amrish, would you have any sort of picks you'd be recommending within the mid caps now? Uh, surely not, not at these levels still. I mean, uh, despite the fact that we have seen most of them cracking heavily, but that does not mean that they'll not crack further. There is very much a possibility of uh, some of these mid caps still cracking further. But still, what I would say is, uh, I think, uh, like, uh, irrespective of the sector, I think uh, people should look at, especially the management, I think that's uh, the most important uh, thing to be looked at while picking up a stock now. And uh, secondly, the sort of a gearing which it, which it has, I think uh, we need to look at only those companies which can possibly service their debt going ahead. I think these are the two most important factors. All right, let's uh, wind down the day's trading action. Uh, it's been a confusing day actually. Good for the headline index. So the index goes home with a gain of about seven tenths of a percent. But then uh, the key sector which has the highest weightage, which is banks, has actually cooled off quite a bit in trade today. So the bank nifty is down one and a half percent, contradictory to the move that we've seen in the headline index. And all of your banking stocks, starting with SBI, posts a very disappointing set of numbers, is down four percent. HDFC Bank, Indusind Bank, P. B, Axis, ICICI are all down about 1 to 2 odd percent. So in essence, it, it, it's really a disappointing day for a couple of these heavyweight sectors like uh, banks. But uh, by and large, the market has held up. On the upside, you've had a lot of uh, your metal names, your biggest beaten down names that have seen a technical bounce back. So JSPL up 10.5%, Tata Steel ahead of its numbers tomorrow up 7.5%. You've had names like Hindalco up about 2.5%, Sessa, Goa, Coal India, etc. up about 1 to 3 odd percent. Sun Pharma, after its numbers and that um, uh, positive uh, uh, you know, move that we saw in its India formulations as well as in its US business, Sun Pharma up about 7 odd percent. And uh, a couple of other names like HCL Tech, ITC, Lupin, um, HUL are also in the green, so up about 2 to 3 odd percent over there. But by and large, uh, you'd have to say that the market has ended the day in the green. So, um, we've uh, started the week on a positive footing. Let's see how long that lasts. Not too many technical analysts believe that this market has further legs on the upside. The Midcap Index had a better day today and it had some good um, result reactions as well, the likes of Marico. Absolutely.
absolutely. It was a good start for the mid caps for the week at least. So up around a percent and a half for the mid cap index, and the advanced decline ratio also was quite stable at around two is to one. In terms of a couple of key gainers, it was a lot of these result reactions which seem to have dominated trade today. So GVK. When infra was up around 14 odd percent, where the airports business was definitely bet on an EBIT front as well as in terms of a segment performance. So that stock did quite well, but on a low base. We had all open the pharmaceuticals, where there is a di uh, divesting or a, a demerger of the injectables unit also, which they've agreed to, and they did come out in terms of a turnaround on the numbers. So that stock was up around 12 odd percent. We had some amount of gains coming into uh, Yes Bank, so that stock uh, saw quite a deceleration in the previous week. So that stock is up around. Six odd percent, and some amount of gains coming into a couple of these NBFCs. So LIC Housing Finance, which releases numbers this week, was up around three and a half odd percent. Manipuram General Finance, which came out with a good set of numbers in terms of a turnaround, that stock was up around three point six percent on a sequential basis. And a couple of other key gainers included Britannia. From the FMCG space, which completely surprised the street in terms of the margin picture, so that stock closes it with a 40 rupee gain at around 735 rupees, and maybe Marico should come up for you in terms of what that closed at as well. So Marico should be up around 1.3 percent for that one. On the downside, uh, there was a bit of trepidation coming into a couple of these banks. The Syndicate Bank was down around 3 odd percent, Yuko Bank was down around 1.6 percent, and a couple of these real estate counters also were quite weak. So IBR. Real, for example, was down around three odd percent in terms of trade. Otherwise, it uh, turned out to be quite a solid session for the mid caps, and volumes weren't too bad either. So we did around 1.6 lakh crore in terms of participation. And by the time we closed up trade, the rupee was back at around 61, and we had the European markets which were pretty much in the red by the time we closed trade. So maybe that bit of deceleration came because of uh, the weakness that we saw in the rupee, which is at 61.1. Amrish uh, didn't get a chance. To ask you about GVK Power and Infra, did you like those numbers? Yeah, I mean uh, these numbers uh, surely were better than uh, what most of us were expecting. Uh, but then again, uh, I think one needs to wait for at least another quarter or two four to see whether this uh, sort of a uh, performance is sustainable or not, or whether it's just a blip. So surely, uh, I mean, uh, uh, like based on the results, I'll not buy into it at this point of time. Possibly, I'll just wait for at least a quarter more. Hmm. Sudarshan, uh, in your opinion, now uh, where do you think the resistance for the market comes in? Is it fifty six hundred? That would be a key resistance level. No, fifty six hundred was crossed today, and we are also closing. And fifty six hundred was not technically significant. See, the much bigger resistance comes at fifty eight hundred. That's so far away that it's at this point it's not even relevant. So I would say that the markets will really find a level beyond which they will not go. Uh, the visible level is 5,800, which is not meaningful. So at this point, we'll just find out in a couple of days that this is the level, this is the line in sand that the markets are unlikely to cross. I'm not able to give a number, but the markets themselves will do it. Okay, uh, Amrish, let me get in on this one. Uh, GVK Power did come out uh, with a set of numbers that did look uh, pretty good, and it does appear that it's more an airport play now. So that stock did see some bit of buying interest today. GMR does come out with their numbers tomorrow. So do you think that the time is right that maybe you can start chipping into something like a GMR GVK, or is it strictly an avoid till be till the cycle actually turns and the debt uh, reduces, etc. No, like I said, I think uh, I mean one should wait uh, at least for a quarter or two more uh, before really deciding to I mean buy into these because uh, clearly I think the balance sheet uh, uh, is a major issue for uh, I mean both these companies as well as uh, like a number of other infra players. So unless that reduces or you actually see the business environment uh, like improving to a large extent, it doesn't make sense getting into them because uh, one would uh, surely get stuck at those high levels. Hmm. Mr. Tulsi, and what about something like a Raymond? Now that stock uh, has rallied more than 10% in the past couple of trading sessions. Even today, it was up nearly around 3%. The other day as well, uh, it, it did see some bit of uh, buying interest. So, 10% uh, up in the past couple of days. Do you think there is uh, some kind of buying interest in this, or is it just uh, a normal technical short covering play? See, Nigel. In fact, all the textile stocks have performed well. I am not talking of particularly of the Raymonds, but if you really see the Century Textile of their division performance, maybe they are even limited. And people now, you know, have started taking a valuation call more to do with the Clarient Chemical. You know, they are selling their land at Thane. So, you know, probably people have started speculating that Raymond will like also come, you know, next in the in the in the line to monetize its land assets because Clarient Chemical is the largest landholder parcel which has remained in and around Bombay. You know, which is about 90 acres of. So 
so. But Raymond is you know looking to monetize maybe about 30, 40 acres of land initially of, of its 180, 80 acres. So when I talk to few of the people, you know, probably they have been banking more on that because they say that yes, there is a good appetite of the land business and things are again on the, as I said, on the textile business, people have been little bullish. So probably the correction has happened. Maybe at the lower level, the value buy call is being taken by the long term, uh, by, by the you know investors, those who have a horizon of about three to six months. It may not be a good for the traders. One may not take a take a call that it will keep on moving like that. But yes, if you keep a view of about maybe three or four months, you can make money at the by buying even at the current level. Right. It does appear that there is some buying interest coming into the likes of uh, Raymond at these levels because that stock is close to half in this year itself. But thanks, gentlemen, for joining in. Interesting day of trade. We did manage to close over that 5600 mark. So that's one good sign for the markets to take away anything good. Bit of a tug of war was going on between ITC as well as Reliance, both those heavyweights going in opposite directions. So ITC gained more than 2% odd while Reliance was uh, was uh, dragging on the downside. So clearly some bit of tug of war going on. But in the end, we did end. Uh, uh, End up with a gain of close around 46 points. This following up the 40 point rally also in a couple of days, 85 points plus. Good times to the markets, though less than convincing. We'll slip into a short break. We'll see you on the other side. We get us a market perspective. Stay tuned.